Good morning. Something you may not know about me is that I've worked several jobs. I've had some interesting experiences with a lot of different people, so I thought today I would share some of them with you. The summer before eighth grade, I got my first regular babysitting job. The family had a three-year-old son and an eight-year-old son. They had just moved to Linfield, the town where I live, when I started babysitting for them. And barely a year later, they moved to California. Though it was a somewhat short period, I can recall vividly those weekday afternoons at their house. Breaking open peanut shells for the kids, apparently the ones without shells don't taste as good. The eight-year-old's reluctance to stop playing and do homework at the dining room table. Sitting on the hall outside of St. Maria's, and of course, when Skylander Swap Force came out. As I mentioned, the boys were about five years apart in age. When we would play games suited to the younger kids, the older boy would get bored. And when we played games more suited to older kids, the younger one would be confused. The afternoons could be long, and I would get excited when the mom's yellow hatchback would finally return to the driveway. Sometimes you have to be a little creative. I tried a classic, tag. We were allowed to run in the house. I was usually the tagger. I tried to get as close as possible without actually tagging the younger one, who was too little to give his older sibling any real chase. We would run in a circle through the kitchen, family room, dining room, and every once in a while, I would hide around a corner and surprise them. Their uncontrollable shrill laughter would make everything seem funny, and I couldn't help but laugh too. Tag became one of my favorite activities because they can't complain while they run, and they tire themselves out. But while the little balls of energy could probably play forever, I could only play so much tag. I looked for other activities for us to do. The children loved holidays, so I made holiday cookies for us to decorate. They would smooth a mound of different colored frosting onto sh the sugar cookies, which they enjoyed eating as much as decorating. This was such a hit that the next thing I know, I'm making cookies for Flag Day. However, the time and money investment to make the cookies began to seriously cut into my $9 per hour. Ultimately, the solution was that their mom, who worked as a sleep scientist for NASA, got relocated to California. So there wasn't an epiphany where I figured out the secret to babysitting or realized I want to be a professional babysitter when I'm older. Still, the experience challenged me to look for creative problem solutions. And I would like to think the experience was of value to the kids as well as I was able to be a brief consistency during a time when they were moving a lot. Just because it was not a big or picture frame experience does not mean it was not significant. Another long-term job I've had is working at an ice cream shop. When I filled out the application for Scoops and More, I proudly wrote babysitting, dog walking, and plant watering in the previous experience section. Pretty solid resume, I know. My mom walked in with me when I picked up an application, and the owner of the so shop said I should have come on in on my own. I was embarrassed. But I came back to the ice cream shop two weeks later, alone this time, having heard nothing. I've decided, the owner of the shop began tensely as I turned towards the door, to hire you. Really? I said surprised. As my boss sounds, she is a bit intimidating but not because she's unreasonable, but quite the opposite, because she is clear about the way she wants the shop to be run. Each Monday morning, she comes in on her own to the tiny shop and makes all the flavors, including black raspberry Oreo, vanilla wedding cake, and pumpkin ginger snap. The pride she takes in her work makes me want to do a good job. It took a while for me to learn how to do everything it can still be challenging to get all the orders right, but I, would, I accepted that I would give my best and fail. And eventually, the frequency with, with which I mistakenly served coffee instead of maple walnut would diminish. During my first summer working, a few guys with leather jackets, tattoos, and piercings came in. 
When they parked their motorcycles and opened the door, I was worried that they might rob the store. <laughs> then the biggest of the guys says, could I please have a small soft serve with extra rainbow jimmies? <laughs> the group comes in often and are some of the nicest customers. I learned to hold my judgment. I've also become opening, open to learning from other people. My more experienced coworkers have themselves trained here, so they are empathetic. One of my coworkers, Amber, is a junior in college. One time I asked her if it was okay that I made the cookie sandwiches with chocolate instead of vanilla by accident. She responded in her usual serious tone, dead. Now, Amber is always ahead of trends and knows all pop culture references. And as you may remember from Diane's speech, I'm a little behind on that stuff. Amber meant that it was, she found it funny that I had switched the flavors. I thought she meant I was dead because I had messed it up. I spent the rest of the night wondering what my boss would say until I finally asked her, should I just throw them out? And she explained what she really meant. Now having worked at Scoops for three or four years, I'm becoming one of the more experienced employees. My boss asked me and another employee to help with the trainee. However, it was a sunny Sunday in August on National Ice Cream Day. People pressed against the purple walls and out onto the sidewalk. The other employee and I skated through the maze of freezers, and the other girl seemed to always be in the way. I felt bad that on one of her first days working, it was this busy, but my main focus was on getting customers out the door. Just as the baseball team arrived, she made a frap filled a bit too high and it exploded. It was so ridiculous that my annoyance turned to humor and I had to conceal my laughter while I helped her clean up. It was a reminder that we all have those times where everything seemed to go wrong and to be patient. Finally, I've worked as a counselor for a tennis camp during the summer. I've worked at different places and last summer I worked at a club near my house. The job is exhausting, but I work alongside some of my friends who I've played tennis with for many years. The camp will get from 30 to over 50 kids each day. To make sure we are accountable for each camper, my boss will periodically ask each of us individually how many campers there are in total. All of us will quietly count aloud, pointing at the kids as we go, starting over occasionally if the kids move around too much. And without fail, fail there will be one of us, or more likely all of us, who gets a different number from the rest. It doesn't make us look too great. So during an especially busy day last summer, one of the counselors suggested that we count the kids and compare numbers before our boss came up so that we could look really on top of things. We were ready. We could barely wait for my boss to finish asking us before we all blurted out the same number. Well, it turned out we had missed little Sophie who had just come out from the bathroom, but at least we were all on the same page. I learned that teamwork can make challenging situations more enjoyable. Each week, new kids come. Some come back for another week, the rest of the summer, or in some cases, many years. All come for a variety of reasons, whether it be that their parents want to get them out of the house or that they really care about tennis. I've come to realize that they like to be appropriately challenged and encouraged. Counseling a camp that I once did as a camper has fostered in me a greater love for the sport. I love just being out there on the courts. It is challenging to do something competitively. There will always be people who are better than you. There will always be days that you feel like you are not at your best. But instead of being frustrated and asking yourself why, are, why you are not meeting your own expectations, it can be helpful to focus on the moment instead of the expectations. Every moment will not be full of the joy of winning a point on a perfect overhead. But big picture, you do what you do because it makes you happy. Observing the kids has also given me insight into human nature. At the beginning, kids stick with the others they know and act however is comfortable for them. Then they slowly open up to learning. They become friends with the other kids they gain confidence and show their character. By the end of the week, even with some of the kids who have had to remind to help pick up balls or have a good attitude, there is a sense of nostalgia in our goodbye. 
In our similar way, all of us here will grow into our own niche at Brooks. And every small experience fills in the lines that mark our time here. Seniors, we may try to look back for big moments that define the essence of our four years. But what about the time spent waiting in line in the dining hall? The walk down Main Street, the minute before class starts. The small mundane experiences in our life have power, perhaps more than we realize at the time. While no one thing may be life shattering, taken together they add color and shape to our lives. Thank you.